<laughs> Thank you. That's how I say what I say and how I feel what I feel. And it's time now for us to stop wrestling in follies of our own devising and invention. And what do I mean by this? It's time to rewrite our history when it comes to race and the cultural, ideological, the cultural ideological contradictions that we have constructed and allowed to plague every corner of our lives for hundreds of years too long, all the way up into this very moment today. And how do we do this? It's my belief and my thought that we tap into our nature of human empathy and we tap into our huge, gigantic capacity for creative imagination. And then through and in the power of music, which is arguably or certainly for me, the greatest persuader and the greatest human catalyst known in the universe, to come together and rewrite this and discontinue on this path and this line of thought and this line of being in action which implores us and compels us to dwell in our disasters instead of living in our blessings. A path with the, the, that we've all accepted too readily which tries to tell us that the truth is there's more that separates us and makes us different and dislike one another than that which unites us and makes us one. Because that isn't the truth. And our human empathy and our creativity and the power of music tell us this. It's evidence of it. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said before he died, he wasn't so worried about civil rights and the fears and anxieties of a nation still trying to understand the myriad contradictions of ideology that we all find ourselves in, genderism, racism, classism, that we let these things define us. He was worried about a poverty of imagination. And that was his belief that that's what was going to get us. And so... In moving forward and tapping into this empathy and our imagination and our collective ability to do good, we use music. Sometimes it has words, sometimes it doesn't, doesn't need words. 
And it comes then from my studies and my teaching and my work as a performer slash scholar that race is nothing but a cultural construct. Doesn't exist, people. Go look online. Bill Nye, the science guy, will tell you, from here until the moon turns blue, we've got it all wrong. Doesn't exist. It's a cultural construct that is the legacy of the morally and socially catastrophic era of slavery in our country. And nothing more. There's no scientific or biological precedent for it. If you have a doctor and a scientist come in to any room and draw the blood from a black man and a white man and a black woman and a white woman, and then blindfold it and you take them and they put it under the microscope, there's no biological or scientific precedent or marker in there that says white man, black man. It's a cultural construct. It's made up. So it's time to get over it. And we do that by our empathy and our imagination and through the power of music. And funny story, I like to do little things too to confound the issue. My hair, <laughs> my interactions, some of the things I say that put people in shock and awe, the things I play. But you can take steps too. Change the vernacular, change the canon, rewrite it, teach people when you can, be an educator. I was at the doctor twice this winter with this horrible thing that hopefully most of you didn't get. But in that inevitable part that we get to in the form where it says race, and I always know they mean ethnicity, but we've got it all confused because ethnicity, that is real. That exists. It's scientific, biological. But when it goes to that part, I've often struggled in my life, do I put black, do I put white? Because I'm half of both. I'm not Asian. I'm not Latino. I never knew what to put. And then they have, they always, in, as, as things got more politically correct, they would put things down into other. So I used to check that. But then I got tired of that too, because I was like, well, wait a minute. Other? I'm a human being, like all of us are. And so this is about a taking back of our humanity, because this is truly indeed about the human race and not race as we've been taught to know it and think of it and live in it. And so I now put a little box, and the two times I did it this winter, one was to exasperation and shock, and the other one got me a little bit of a giggle. And a, hmm, interesting. But I put check box human. That's what we all are, people. We're the same. And so in light of this, that's what I do outside of this. And in music, I do this. And we're going to try it now. I need your help. I'm going to ask you to sing a little bit with me. I'm going to be my band and my choir. And we're going to see how this feels in this room. And I need you to be vulnerable. Because that's how you tap into your nature of empathy. And I need you to be creative. Use your imaginations. It's a really simple little piece. And some of you may be saying, oh, I can't sing. I'm not a musician. Yes, you are. We're all musicians. You have had two instruments in your body since the day you came onto this earth. One's right here, and one's right here. So this song goes like this. I'll play it for you, I'll help you, and then we're gonna make music together. Again, we'll try that with me. You can say la, da, wa. And if you miss a note, that's okay. I'm a jazz guy. I like dissonances. <laughs> Polonius monk. Okay? And it's only the dissonances that make the consonances so beautiful. So help me out. We're going to say two, three, four. Good. La 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 la
da 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 good keep it going for me Thank you. Does not feel good. Does not feel right. That's the truth. That's what we need to trust in. Not what we've been told, not what we've been taught, not what we continue to be plagued by. It's 2019. Funny story, a couple things. And I'm gonna wrap it up. I have a fantastic, incredibly extraordinarily talented student that I've been working with for a few years. He's a piano player. And it just so happens he's blind. Incredible musician. And I had come in one day to our class, was doing a lecture before the band, and not in an attempt to vent, not in an attempt to seek pity, but just to explain to them because it's who I am and I want to talk about these things. And as I tell them on the first day of, day of class that, that race doesn't exist and jazz is alive, I tell them also on the first day of class that this is real and these things happen and we can unpack it and fix it, but we've got to make it okay to talk about it. We have to make it okay to talk about it. And so I was talking about an, an interaction I had with a Bozemanite who sort of remained nameless, but was flagrantly racist, demoralizing, demeaning, degrading, hurtful. And I kept seeing his hand raised out of the corner of my eye. And at a point where I could take a break and stop, I finally looked over to him and I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, wait a minute, you're black? <laughs> and I said, yes, I am, just so happens. And instead of a sigh of exasperation or a, a tilted head in bewilderment or any of the said such, he took about a three second pause and said, oh, well, all right, anyway, what songs are we gonna practice today? <laughs> because our eyes deceive us. The color tone of my skin and the texture of my hair does not define my character and my humanity. It has nothing to do with it. You as well. Nothing. So it's time, as Ralph Ellison would say in 1958, to change the joke and slip the yoke. And come together as we were made to be and as we are in oneness, in likeness, and dismantle these untruths. Because the truth is, race doesn't exist, and jazz is alive. And so imagine a place and a day and a time for me. It's a question I ask myself, I'm going to pose to you. When I get to be a man, a father, a brother, a son, a professor, a scholar, a saxophone player, instead of a black man, a black professor, the African-American saxophonist. W.E.B. Du Bois talked about it in 1903. There's a double consciousness for a black man in America, which we have to exist in, that are equated to two unreconcilable strivings. It's time to move on now. We're better than that. We're smarter than that. We have bigger hearts than that. And the empathy which makes us human, that is our very deepest core nature, outweighs all of that. So I want you to imagine a time for me, please, when I get to be just an American and no longer an African-American. Because sure, it's part of my ethnicity, 
both of the above, but I wasn't born in Africa. I don't hail from there. I didn't grow up in the traditions and customs of colonialism. I've read tons of books in the diaspora, and I'm deeply rooted in that tradition, but that's the extent to which I have to do with anything African. I'm an American born and raised in Bozeman, Montana, and so that's the day I look forward to and the question I want you to leave with today and what I want you to imagine is when we can get to that place and that time. Thank you.